And we're back with more explosions. Let's take a look at what are we looking at? We're still using the Pyro Burst source, but we are doing something special with it. So we are emitting way more emitters. The way you can do that, you create <coughs> something like a grid, you noise it up. In this case, it was a circle. Scatter points and change the start frame attribute. The start frame attribute will activate based on the frame. So each number will have a different value. Start frame. So start frame on frame seven, we're gonna have an emission on frame eight, 10, 18, and so on. You will have emissions based on where your points are. So that's pretty cool. Emitting, nothing, doing nothing special here. Uh, the only thing I am changing is the temperature start frame. So in the beginning, we won't get, you can see it will grow up. The, the temperature grows with our fuel and then it ignites everything. We can make this even more exaggerated. Let's say put it to 10. Let's not cache anything just so you, we can see it. And there we go. And then it starts exploding and uh, the combustion kicks in. All right, I'll put it back to what I had before. Uh, here is another setup. If you want to do trails, you can do that as well. I would recommend that you do them in this case uh, separately. So you can combine them if you want in the same sim. Uh, but for the sake of control, I usually do them in a separate sim. In this case, I would do them in a separate sim uh, so I can control how much disturbance I get. But you can see this is also quite fast to sim. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's go back to our main simulation. What are we doing here? So now we are emitting a bunch of different emitters, like we're clustering them. So this looks pretty good. And let's take a look at our temperature. Oh, so our temperature is already gone. So we have it in the beginning, but it dissipates quite fast. So what can we do in an example like this? Uh, I kind of want more of the classic explosion where the tip of the explosion is still burning and has a lot of temperature. So for that, we can just increase temperature here in the emission tab. So now our fire is going to be rising up. It's like, this is a more, this explosion is more, uh, I would say a large scale explosion. So I look at them from a distance. It looks pretty good. We are getting what we wanted. You can see some of the explosions are still going in, in the middle. So that's why this is happening. That's why we're getting the temperature in the, in the middle like that. And that works. And I'm quite happy with that. It looks pretty good too as well. What we can do though is a trick. So if we go under the simulation and we have our cooling tab here, the control field for cooling tab has all the same fields like we were discussing so far. And I like to put this on density and reverse it. What that will do, if I go under density here, everywhere where we have high density. So anything that is dark right now is low density and anything that is white has high density. That is also happening because we are emitting more density and we can, we can emit even more density where the burn is happening, which means that we're going to get these white caps. And that will give us even more control to where our dissipation is happening. So we do need to invert it. So if I invert it, you will be able to see everywhere there is uh, where the values are bright, the dissipation will be faster. So that's why you have to invert it here in the shader as well. It's going to be like this, inverted. That's where we get our values from. 
have something similar here. And now if we sim this, we will exaggerate that effect of where the burning is happening and where the dissipation is happening. And this is just another way you can control your explosions and your simulations. So actually, I know the simulation is quite fast, so I will cache it here, and then we can just take a look at the viral bake afterwards. Just a few more seconds. And I know I'm saying this a lot, but usually this will take a, for a sim like this to view it at least like half an hour, maybe less, maybe more, it depends, but uh, for it to be able to take half a minute or, you know, something around a minute is pretty, pretty spectacular. And a lot of people are saying that we are ruining coffee breaks for VFX artists because nobody can do coffee breaks anymore. All right. Let's check it. So you can see we are still emitting at this hot core. So I forgot how many frames we cached, but let's do a preview. Looks pretty good. We have good. This is a bit too much for me. I'm not too worried about anything right now. I'm just, we're just looking at the, you know, how the temperature is evolving and dissipating. No, I think we're gonna be cut off here. But it looks quite good in general. I like the movement. Like after a while, like this is a bit too much for me, but here, right where we are cutting off, it starts to look pretty good. I really like this one area that happens here. This guy looks very organic. All right, cool. So that's, oh yeah, that was looking pretty good. Where are we? Yeah, I like it. So that's another look at how you can emit and create your explosions.